welcome to all the men and women of the West. And to Dan, this is the first time in a bit you're back in the studio, so to speak. So, yes. Hello and greetings. And today we start our first Dragonlance book club in a while. Actually, this is technically the first book club. The last one we did was Dragon... No, wait. Was Dragon Month with Aurora's Eggs. And anyone who's been with us since Dragon Month knows I always say the word dragon like that. The Cavanesti begins with two chapter ones, because why not? I mean, we don't want a chapter called chapter three book is not what i expected and i'm going to get into my gripes of, in a bit we're just going to cover the first two chapters chapter one and chapter one it starts off with Kaganos griping a little about sylvanos who has founded the sylvanesti elves attracting more and more elves to his walled cities and whatnot because he's angry that how dare these elves want safety i'm joking but actually this book, at least the first chapter, takes place in, in 3811 pre-Cataclysm. And we also learn that Sylvanos' tribe is blonde and apparently extremely hated by Kaganos. He's after a great father, Ram. The Ram is an a point of obsession in this chapter with a buffoonishly written elf called Quithus Griffintamer, one of Sylvanos' noblemen, who acts like a buffoon, tries to hunt down the Ram, out of simple desire to wear its head as a standard. Basically, because he's civilized, or at least civilized in such a way that he's portrayed as cartoonishly bad and barbarous in a lot of ways, where the... Oh, I really hate this stereotype. The noble savage is more civilized by nature. The ram, after Quithus is chased off, speaks. And no, it doesn't sing. I was really hopeful there. They would launch into maybe a song like from that one little red riding hood movie you know which hoodwinked one? hoodwinked yeah with that goat but actually no it's darlington the dragon taking on the shape of a goat gives kaganos the horns to use as war horns then we get to the next chapter where we find out that yes five dragon gems which have a lot of magic contained in them have been given to the elves by the gods that one of these horns the blue one has been stolen Thematically, this fits with the idea of the Blue Dragon ar armies coming out on top in the War of the Lands. So there's clearly a nod given there. This is a very crafty, good kind of motif here in reference to the Chronicles. I say that this is a positive because it is. This is Douglas Niles. He is really good in this way. And I really like it when he gets like this. That said, not much happens still. And we find out that the, the elves are a lot of intertribal blame and... That some of them blame their suffering on Kaganos. The blue dragons, though, remain intact because their gem has been lost, so they can't contain them. But that Sylvanos has proven to be a brilliant tactician and strategist. And this is Kaganos who acknowledges this grudgingly and reluctantly. It's like, oh, I hate this guy. Why? No reason. I just hate him. But I have to admit, he's brilliant. Darlington takes the form of a human because. Of course. Kaganos complains because he doesn't like humans. You know, I'm getting the feeling Kaganos is just the biggest bigot in Elvish history until Portheos and his dad. Well, someone has to set the standard. Yeah, I know. And of course, it's a Kaganesti elf, which is weird because the Kaganesti elf are portrayed as being fairly racially tolerant in other books. Mm -hmm. So Kaganos is just a black sheep, I guess. I'm imagining there's going to be character development. Not that it'll save one major problem from the book. That's an opinion. I'll get to my opinion in a minute. And the gods of magic are being punished for having stolen, well, for having given magic to the elves. Darlington predicts that Sylvanos will need help. Oh, and at the end of the chapter, in three days, the ogres under the command of Talonian will be reaching the tribe that, that Kaganos is trying to get to. And chapter one slash two, the second chapter, whatever, it is set in 3,357 pre-cataclysm. My complaint here is that I went in thinking this novel actually involved the events of, yes, the dragon gems, but that it was the story of how the Sylvanesti elves went from being cavemen to being Sylvanesti elves. That's what had me going, oh, this is going to be exciting. I've been waiting years to read this story. And then I read about some schmuck called Kaganos who hates everybody. It's just not well written. And you can tell Niles is winging it. So then I'm just left going, really? We're not going to see Sylvanos? It's just going to be some guy complaining on his porch going, I had Sylvanos. Things were better before that youngster showed up. Come on. Like, I kind of had in mind that this would be the Dragonlance equivalent of 
watership down. And we would see Sylvanos lead the tribes from one area to another, establishing Sylvanesti and the city of Sylvanos, and leading his people through various trials and dangers from barbarism to an actual country, becoming the speaker of the stars and fighting against the dragons. But instead, we jumped over that story to Kavanos' story, which left me with a bitter taste in my mouth. I'm hoping the book will get better. Hopefully, we'll get through maybe three or four chapters after this, maybe out of a desire to approach the Chronicles or something, because that's the really exciting stuff. And I really do want to reread the Chronicles after having read Dragons of Deceit. What did you think of these chapters and of my premise? What I had thought would be the story, a watership down from barbarism to civilization. I, I want to see Sylvanos. I would have loved to see that premise building of Sylvanesti. The first real, the first civilization in Dragonlance. Exactly. There's so much history and lore in Dragonlance. It would be nice to see that. But instead we skip over it. That just feels like we're being cheated. This should be the Silmarillion of Dragonlance. It's not. Now, they did a great job with prequel stories to this event with a lot of great short stories and anthologies. That was perfect. If you can't beat the Silmarillion at its own game, just do your own thing, like an anthology series to explain things and to act as a lead-in to other books, such as the Urgoth trilogy or the Vinus Alamnus novels. But this story doesn't feel quite right. It doesn't have a place. The Sylvanos story is far more important. And I kind of feel like book one with there should have been almost two books. One book is the leading to civilization, and the other is maybe the events of this novel, but from the Sylvanesti point of view. But anyways, let's end this video. So don't forget to smash that like and that subscribe button as though you were Puma trying to put an end to Takesis' evil once and for all.